Boss Analogy Podcast. Yep. How was your weekend? Uh, it was good. Um, I'm healed up. Um, how about you, man? There's a lot of good fights this weekend. I had a lot of great fights. Hold on, we being rude. Before, before we get into that, <laughs> we do have a special guest here. Yes, I was just going to say boy. that. Uh, David Reyes. <laughs> What's your David name? Reyes. What's your David name? Reyes. David Reyes. AKA P2. AKA P2, one of the fighters here at Bostonology. Um, one of the, the good fighters here at Bostonology. <laughs> let, me, let me put some respect on his name. Yes, sir. Um, very accomplished. Well, 2021 Metro's Novice Champion. Yes, he sir. was in the finals for the Ringmasters last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Before COVID hit, hit the scene. He was in the finals for the Golden Gloves quarterfinals. Uh, so he's eight and two right now as an amateur. He's put in a lot of work. Uh, he's 126 pounds, yep. 22 years old, right? Yep. And he's, uh, the future is very bright for him. He's also the co-owner of DMK Boxing and Fitness. DMK Boxing and Fitness. And it's yes. located in Porchester, New York, 141 South Main Street. And what type of gym is it? Uh, it's a studio um, gym, uh, private session we, we run there. So everybody go check them out. Everyone from Port Chester and uh, all that area around there, go check them out, Harrison. Yeah. So Dave, tell us, what do you think about the fight this week? Let's talk about, we, we, first and foremost, the Devin Haney Devin. fight. Oh, that was, I, that was a tremendous fight. Uh, I enjoyed that fight a lot. Um, Everybody had their critiques on it, but um, it was a rough and sluggish fight. Rough and um, how you say it? Um, <laughs> it it was a it was a it was a rough fight for Devin. Like, yeah. Usually, like he, he gets out of these fights a little clean. I, I know the yeah, basically. the Lenaris fight. He, he took some punishment like towards the end, but this one was like JoJo's a JoJo like we talked about before. He's a uh, he's a real uh, rough dude, so. It was a little tough with Devin. He looked a little different to me. Yeah, it was it was definitely sluggish. Um, they were going at it. Um, both hitting each other. Um, so it was a, a lot of combat. Um, which I enjoy to see. Um, they usually talk about how Devin Haney is boring and stuff like that. Um, this is one of his best fights yet, and um, he showed a lot of heart. Sweet, sweet science. This yeah, is preference. Definitely. Preference. Definitely. So what you think, bro? I say, I've been saying for a while that Devin ha Devin Haney. Reminds me a lot of Floyd and little things, right? But he hasn't put all his repertoire together. He hasn't put his arsenal complete. He's either moving his feet and not punching, or he's punching, not using his head. I mean, he hasn't done the it's whole the offense and defense with him. Like yeah, he's not, he's not complete yet, but I'm, I'm still waiting for that. Um, I like that he was, he was very accurate. Uh, I like he was hitting to the body with the right hand. He he started with the jab pretty hard, but as rounds went by, his jab was very lazy, and there was rounds that he didn't throw enough jabs, and then this guy kept coming in. Um, I would like to see more footwork. I want to see him throw his shots and move. I think he takes unnecessary punches. I believe he should be throwing his shots and then moving out the way. It makes the fight much easier for him and much harder for his opponent. His opponent was okay. I give his opponent, I know I'm gonna be rough on this, a C plus. He fought in spurts. He didn't do anything spectacular. I didn't see no urgency. Towards the end, he put a little urgency, but I don't, think, I don't understand a lot of people. They know they're losing the fight. The last round, they go a little harder. You should have did that before, you know? You should have did that from the eighth round. You should have did that from round one. Yeah, the whole fight. Devin, Devin the, whole the whole fight. Devin yeah. Haney definitely um, started dominating towards the end, um, in my opinion. Um, I think he was. Just, it was just a matter of you know um, dictating the opponent, understanding you know what he's doing, and I think he picked up after after that, and he just let, started letting his hands go yeah. more often. Um, what weaknesses you see, Dave? Uh, of Devin Haney? Yeah. Um, well, he he doesn't know how to fight on the inside too well. Um, he shies away from that. Sometimes, as a fighter, you know, you're gonna have to stand your ground and, you know, put your, put your back into it. So that's where he was lacking on um, the boxing skills. Like He's that. one of the best boxers in, in boxing, so. I think he fought good on the inside, but I think he stays too long in the pocket, yeah. and that's when he gets hit. Yeah, uh, 
that's not his that's not his game. Like I, yeah. like you said, he, he stays way too long in the pocket. Too long. Too long. Too long. Too long. Get, get what you gotta get and get out of there. Move, keep the guy turning, use your jab. He abandons the jab. Like you said, like towards the end of the fight, he just abandoned the jab. Like it's working. He has a an excellent jab. Excellent jab. Excellent jab, I, jab reach. I think a lot of it has to do with confidence. I don't think he believes in this stuff yet. I mean, like I said, he goes, the, the, the Jorge Linares fight, he goes after the fight, he asks his own, how did I do? Do I hit hard? You know, do I move fast? You know, am I looking good in the ring? Yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't have the confidence. I don't believe he's 100% believing in himself yeah. in, in these fights. That, and when he does, it's gonna be scary. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. He's, what, how old is he, 20, 22, 23? He's, he's a he's, low 20s, I mean, yeah. he's young. Yeah, I mean, he's got he's got time, but like you said, like the, the confidence is definitely a thing, like, especially what he said at the Lawrence fight, like we talked about that last last week. That's, that's, that's a no-no. I wanna, I wanna see Devin Haney do what uh, George Gambosis do, did. Move, throw your shots, move, let your hands go. Be comfortable. You gotta be fearless. You, you Gan, got, Gambosis, yeah. Gambosis you was fearless in that fight. You gotta go in there, not reckless. You gotta go there smart, but knowing that what you have is gonna work. Yeah, yeah. Are you, do you think um, these fighters are getting pushed too too quickly? Um, yes. Like Devin Haney, um, I wouldn't say Javante, but Teofimo. These fighters are getting pushed um, too quickly, and maybe it's because of the media. You know, a lot of pressure. Well, I I think it's the media. I think it's the media, and I think it's the fighters because they're all calling each other. It, it's yeah. funny because there's. 10 guys, and if you add 10, because he loved it, because he just came for 140. Thank I was God. looking at the magazine, he was at 140. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even ranked in the 135. So now he's back in the 135. You get 11 guys, everybody there could win a belt. Everyone there is, is very good. It's packed. It's packed very good. good in that division. You got Lomachenko, Ryan Garcia, uh, Javier Fortuna, uh, Jojo, uh, uh, this kid Cruz, Isaac Cruz. You got Tang, uh, George Gambosas, Teofimo yeah, Lopez. Yeah. You know, so you, you got a stacked division. Yeah. You know, Lomachenko's in there. Uh, Richard Comey. Yep. I yep. mean, this is a hot division. Little by little, it's unfolding though. Um, they're fighting each other. You can see it. Teofimo with Gambosas, Devin Haney with JoJo. So everybody, you know, I think is unfolding. It's a matter of time. Yeah, it's a matter. Yeah, they so they, 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 they got to fight each other though. at some point. Yeah, like it's a matter of time. I time think though. I think the problem is that the promoters. Uh, as well as uh, the fighters and and as well as the fans, they want to make these fights happen fast. Even though they're very young, they still need probably five more fights before they go to the mainstream. But I think they just care. People are scared that they're gonna jump up in weight, maybe go lower in weight, um, and not fight each other. And they don't want to miss out these super fights that could happen early. Uh, big money, man. Big money. Like this guy Ryan Garcia, we still. Nothing. Like he comments on the tank fight, and we're gonna get into that fight a little later. But he comments on the tank fight. He's like, "Dude, why are you even talking? Like, we, you, we haven't seen you fight in, in years. Like, why are you even commenting on it? Every time someone's fighting, he's got something to say. He reminds me of a little kid. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I can't really explain it too well. But he, he just reminds me of a little kid that just. And he, he it is. makes no he's, sense. He's, 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 he's really young. Sense. He's yeah. young, and I, I, I get it. But like, you're a fighter. You're a fighter first. Yeah. I think he's worried more about his social media. Yeah. He's big in YouTube. I don't think he's focused. I think he's made a lot of money probably from the YouTube. He's made money from boxing, from probably signing with De La Hoya. Yeah. And I think it's going to get to a point that De La Hoya is going to get tired too. Yeah. I mean, he's defending him and he's riding with him. But there's going to be a point that he's going to say, hey, when are you going to start fighting these guys? I can't. I can't be... Backing you up all day. And Canelo already called him out. Yeah, and that's that's his, that's his boy. And that's his boy. This constructive criticism, and he's, he's right. Like, dude, I don't want to see you tweeting no more, bro. Like, I want to see you in the ring. Like, this is you a fighter. You ain't a Twitter a Twitter warrior. <laughs> and and he's going the same route as Teofimo Lopez, hitting people, well, well strong man in the stomach, smoking whole cause. Yeah. That's not what he's doing, but he's hitting people in the stomach with the best thing. And we I mean, got to end it for, for Teofimo. Yeah, and, and if you don't take boxing serious, especially when you got other guys that are just as hungry and just as equally talented, because he is, I think RC is very talented. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just don't think his mind is into it. And he can't fight a tank. Even though, look, if he would have been taking this real serious, he had a good chance against anybody. But right now, 
I give him a very little chance because I don't think he really wants to fight. If he really wanted to fight, he'd be in the gym every day training, yeah, yeah. not in the hospital in Bellevue. <laughs> so, uh, Devin Haney, what's your, what's your final letter grade on Devin Haney for the fight? Uh, I'm going to give, I mean, he fought a quality guy in the rank in the top 10, right? Um, the pressure was on. I, I seen a lot more in Dev, Devin. I, I saw him more poised. Uh, I like his shot selection. He just got to get out the way of the punches. He stays too long, and I think he loses a lack of concentration with his jab. Uh, I think stuff that he could work on, but they gotta, They don't have that much time. It's, it's the, crunch time. So great. I give him a, a B minus. Just because I expect more. Because I'm looking at him as the next Floyd. Yeah. Not that he's going to be Floyd. Right. But very similar to, you know, little things. So I, I, I'm very hard on his on the criticism of him. So I'm going to give him a, a B minus. Yeah, I, I, I give him a B. I give him a B. Not I was, go, I was going for, with a B plus. B plus. Yeah. Why? I, I like it. I like, I like the, the fight um, that he just had on. I think it was a tough fight. Jojo Diaz is, is a really tough opponent. Um, he's not the best boxer, but he's a tough opponent. He's quality opponent. And um, he, he did well against him. He won a lot of rounds. So, I'm You know, one close. question I want to say. So, mm -hmm. uh, a few fights already with uh, with this one here, with Jojo Diaz and, and the fight with uh, uh, the last fight. What's his name? Uh, uh, Linares. Jorge Linares. Yep, yep. He didn't go down, but he got wobbled a few times in both fights. Oh, he, he, he was shaking, he, shaking. He was hurt. In the Lenares fight, he was yeah. grabbing him even around after. He yeah. didn't recover after that. And this fight, he was shaking a little bit. Yeah. So, I question his chin. I mean, he's not the type of guy that should be standing there. There's a reason no. why not to stand and there. He's not a power puncher. He, he he doesn't have anything. If a guy like Theofimo or Tank, even uh, Isaac Cruz, these are guys that hit hard. Yeah. What will happen if they consistently, consistently, consistently hit him? He's gonna look like a piñata, you know. So he has to use his footwork and moves. I, I agree. I agree. I, I can't even. I can't even argue that. Um, excellent, excellent fighter, excellent boxer. But again, you're in the pocket too long, man. That's, that's it's not his game. Not his game. Dave, who would you like to see uh, a Haney fight next? Um, well, yeah, that Cam Cambosis. I want him to see win, win all the belts. Um, if you could do that at this age, I mean, you know, it's, it's good to see a young hungry fighter do something like that. Um, Teofimo did it. He could do it. Um, I think he's better. I think he's one of the best, honestly. Mm -hmm. Haney? Yeah, I think Haney's on. Um, he showed it. Um, and who do you think wins that fight between Haney and Gambosas? Uh, and, that, and that fight, that's by a, the way, that's a will most fight. likely be about 99.9% .9 sure in Australia. Yeah, yeah. around easy was about 8,000 so? people. Yeah, and listen, Devin uh, uh, Gambosa said he wants to fight Australia next fight, and Devin Haney said, I don't mind flying out there. He said he could be in Jupiter. <laughs> He'll be in Jupiter, yeah. So he's, if he's willing to do it, you know, then that just makes the odds harder. Yeah, not as a, your from, as a 50 50. From what I've seen from Cambosa in that last fight, that is a very, very tough fight for Devin yeah. Haney. That's a very, yes. that guy is fearless, man. Like, he. He's he's got that that that, 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 dog. Guy, that that he's got that dog in him. <laughs> and Devin Haney's not a power puncher. And, not, that's and not gonna be a knockout. Exactly what we were talking about. Sitting in the pocket, you can't do it with that guy. You can't. Do, he's got to box him. He's got to box him to perfection. Like that is a tough fight. And that is the type of fight that Devin Haney needs to put everything together. That's everything. the type of fight. If he's gonna win all the belts and be called the man, he has to put everything together. Yeah. I, I, I believe his training camp is great. I think he trains hard. I don't think he takes shortcuts. No. But he, he has mental laps. He does little things he has to work on. Maybe he needs to add a second trainer into the, into the mix. Mm -hmm. he has. I, I mean, you, ha you have to step it yeah, up somehow. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he, uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey, Mickey, uh, Mickey Bay. He, yeah, he, he was a okay. former fighter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He used to fight on the. He yeah. actually fought Cambosis, if I'm not mistaken. I, he yes, yes, Cambosis. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Make it back, make it back. Shout out to him. It's a good fight, though. Um, but, yes. So, my question. Do you think Devin should take Cambosis next? This is for both of y'all. Or do you think he should take another fight 
before that, or do he, does he take Cambosis in his next fight? What do you think, Dave? Yeah, yeah, take I mean, take him. Um, he's been calling him out already. Um, he's been asking for this. This is what he's wanted. Um, now you're saying he should take him. He should take him, and he's ready. Do you for think him. he's ready? He's ready. Okay, he's ready. that's what I want to hear. So, he's ready. Okay. Um, we don't know how ready he is, you know, because you know Styles make fights, but um, he's he's ready for him. Um, okay. Yeah, I think he should take him. I mean, look, I mean. You can't go backwards. Yeah. Well, who's he gonna do? Get a tune up below the top ten? He just fought a guy that's in the top ten, you know, and just fought uh, Giorgio Diaz, who's in the top ten. Mm -hmm. So he's not gonna get to fight Tank because Tank just had a fight. He's not gonna fight Cruz because they just had fights. And he's not gonna fight Ryan Garcia because <laughs> you don't, don't know where, where the fuck he is. And Ryan Garcia needs a tune up. He needs to fight someone from ten to fifteen. Maybe two times, uh, two different guys, and then get into the mix. I, I can't see how he's just gonna jump in there. And he could very well do it, you know. Uh, but I think confidence level. I mean, he needs two easy fights. He's a young kid. You no, know, I, I heard a rumor about him in um, Jose Vargas maybe fighting. I don't know. Somebody mentioned. Mm -hmm. this. Yeah, I checked that. That's false. Oh, that's false. That is false. Yes. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> but anything is possible and anything is doable yeah. with the right money, the right team. Anybody could take the fight, yeah, you know. I mean, you <laughs> give me fifty thousand dollars and I'll be losing some weight right now. <laughs> yeah, I jump, in, I jump in there, jump in there right now, fifty k. Um, if Jake Paul calls me out, I'll yeah. be glad to take some punches and slaps in I, my face. I think you'll beat him. I believe I so think too. You can beat him. I believe I'm so too. Yeah, Tommy Fury backed out too. Uh, I think he had an injury. He needs an opponent. He needs an opponent. Yeah, he's getting the rematch with uh, with with uh, Woodley. Woodley? Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting for the people that are non-boxers. Yes. Because I am not interested in that fight. Yeah, I, I won't watch it. I, I'm not gonna watch it. Um, I, I like to watch real boxing. I don't know about everybody else, but yeah. Even though the Teach his own. even though uh, Paul has gotten a lot better. Yeah. He didn't look that sloppy. He's been using the jab. He's not throwing crazy. He did 10 rounds, right? Was it 10 rounds? You know, there's guys I know in the gym that can't even do three, and they're here this every day. True. This, <laughs> is true. this is true. No, he's, the guy's training. He's training. He's training. I, think, he's I think YouTube boxing is good for boxing. You know what I mean? Is there anything that's going to promote boxing yeah. is good for boxing. Yes, absolutely. You know? And actually, he's respecting boxing because he literally is every day from what Zab Judah said and other people. That he's taking it as serious yeah. as possible. Yeah. And he's been sparring a lot of pros. You, you can tell. Like, he's, he's actually getting better. Yeah. He's actually getting yeah. better. And I, I want to ask y'all this. Because um, a lot of boxers have an issue with the YouTube boxing thing, like you just said. Right? Yeah. And I agree with you. I don't yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing. Especially, like, these guys are getting millions of dollars for this. Like, I, I don't knock nobody's hustle. Like, first of all, I don't ever want to get into another man's pockets. But if that's how you're getting your money, get it. Like, I'm not jealous. But a lot of boxers feel... There's guys that's been training their whole life and yeah. dedicating their life to this, and they're not getting those kind of payday. They're not getting that kind of exposure. Like, and do that's, you think that's, that's exactly a fair criticism? Is. No, it's, 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 it's not fair. I mean, you know, it's just it's business. It's it's business. Honestly, like that's how you just have to look at it. Um, it's who you bring into the table. Like your fans, you know, they're gonna come out and watch you. True. I mean, even. Some of the best pop box like Terrence Crawford, you know how y'all say he doesn't get enough um, praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah praise. Yeah. So it's it's just like that in that sense. He just he has a lot of praise behind him. Yeah. So that's why it, make, it makes it seem like that. But um, you know he's putting in the work. He's doing what he needs to do. Um, Listen, yeah. you can't yeah. knock anybody that has a following. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The guy is not trash because I can't call anybody trash in boxing, but. No. He's, he's putting in the work at a fast, high level, right? Mm -hmm. Rapid speed. Yep. Um, and I know this, and look, it sucks that a lot of guys have been doing this for a long time. They have a 200 amateur fights. Some people even have 300 amateur fights, and they're not making a million dollars. They're not even making $100,000. Yeah. And this guy's making a few million already. But you know what? They should have thought of the idea of the YouTube. Yeah. They should have did something on YouTube to create this flow of followers. And if they would have did that, they would have had yeah. that check. Yeah. So yeah. listen, there's gonna be people out there that's gonna create ideas. Paul happened to just be one of the first, and his brother. And um, and, they, and they were athletes already, they were wrestlers already. So it wasn't like they never knew nothing. 
<laughs> millions, millions of followers. Like you, you get what you, what you negotiate at the end of the day, right? These guys are bringing something to the table. Basically. Like they, 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 they come to any any promotional company and say, "Hey, listen, I can bring a million viewers to you." Yeah. <laughs> and they're very good shit talkers. They are. They yeah. Are. And I like that. And I oh, think yeah, we're in an age. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're top two. Yeah. Top and, two shit yeah. talkers. And, and 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 we're in an age that people like to hear yeah. WWE. Crap, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's what it is, that, that drama too. Yeah. And listen, like I said, teachers, on, I don't watch it, but happy for those guys, they, they're doing their thing, they're hustling. Um, but I think we're all in agreement with this. Like, no boxer should feel any way about it. If you're a boxer, just box, man, do your thing. Yeah. That, that is something completely separate. I don't I don't even consider them, like, yeah, in a professional boxing range. Yeah, it's, I don't even think they should be thinking about those guys, like, me personally. Yeah. yeah, it's a different well, level. Well, right now, there's going to be a lot of people thinking about them because of the paycheck that they're going to get. Well, then go get it. You go know? get it. Go, go challenge them. I would. <laughs> so to go, so <laughs> Easy money. So to go to a different route now, okay. Dave, tell us a little bit about your preparation for fights. What do you go through each and every day? Give us a rundown from the morning that you wake up to the nighttime. What do you really do? What do you eat? How many miles do you run a day? How many times do you spar a week? Uh, and, and what are you looking to do to get better? Um, well, the first thing I do, I'm, I'm on the scale, the top of the morning. I'm always checking myself constantly throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, running four or five miles, depending on um, the long distance. Then we got two miles for sprints, maybe. Um, as for dieting, um, it differs. I, I switch it around. Um, I don't think it's hard for me to cut weight. I'm, you, I walk around at around. 135, um, so I'm dropping down to 126, so it's like a 10 pound, 11 pound um, weight difference. Um, Is that with that chicken parmesan I saw you with yesterday? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, um, we, right now we're not on <laughs> training camp, so we good, but um, yeah, I mean, cutting the weight is, is, is not really that um, hard. Um, I know some guys that are cutting like 20 pounds, 25 pounds, you know, which is crazy. Um, uh, as for the miles, yeah, four or five miles, running four or five times a week. Um, wearing a sauna suit um, for training camp. Um, we're just doing everything. I mean, bags, footwork. I saw the sauna suit. That's a beautiful sauna suit. How did you get that? How did you acquire it? Coach Wilson gave it to me. <laughs> Bing bong! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one of the best um, sauna suits, honestly. I, I spent like two pounds. Um, compared to regularly without nothing on, I sweat off like two pounds easily. Um, yeah, I mean, training camp, training camp is like any other training camp. In the bags constantly, um, going over the game plan with my coach, um, Coach Fernando. Um, shout out to Coach Fernando. Yeah, Los shout, out, shout out to the man that's in Dominican Republic. Yeah, he calls me just about every day, asking me what I want. He's brilliant. Um, he knows what, what he's doing. Um, he's yes, he part of the reason why I'm, I'm so great right now. Um, Honestly, um, yeah, training camp is just like no other. You know, grind hard, put the work in, um, and you're going to get the results. Will you say that 90% is mental or 90% is physical? Um, or what's the percentage? How would you break it down? I give it 50-50. I give it, um, well, I think they're in their own lanes, honestly. At this point, is at their own lanes. Um, hmm. 100% mental and 100% um, physical. That's interesting. Um, my body, my body be, is hurt. It, it gets beat up um, during training camp. It's in pain. Um, it's, it's at an all-time high um, during training camp. And the mentalness is just to keep going, to keep doing it every, every day, you know, until it's fight time and stuff like that. So it, it's at an all-time high, both of them. So I give it What do you enjoy? to do in the gym. What is it, the one thing you enjoy to do? Jump rope, sparring? Spar. <laughs> I love to spar. Why? I love to dominate. Um, I think that's my biggest thing. I, I just get in there and I just, I feel like I can be myself. Um, honestly, I get to be this demon. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like to dominate. I like to assert myself. I like to make sure that other, other man knows that I'm, I'm the better man in the ring. And I'm, you know. As, as, as it should be. Yeah. All the time. What is your aspirations in boxing? What do you plan to do? Do you plan to be in the amateurs forever or do you plan to go pro? What is your ultimate goal? Well, I want to do it. Me and my coach talked about 
and even you, we talked about um, being in the amateur for like a year. Um, you know, gather out these amateur fights, maybe like 40, 50, um, build a good resume, and then eventually um, we go pro, and then from there we attack that as a whole. Um, and then what was the other question? So to answer that question, right, to go with the question, um, that David said that he's looking for 30 to 50 amateur fights, yeah. maybe go pro in a year. Now, I always, I think that's one of the best things to do if you're a hungry, young uh, cub yeah. and you want to be a lion, this is the way to go because the more fights you have in the amateurs, the more relaxed you will be in the professionals. And it just shows that you have a resume, just like somebody that will go for a job into you, they're gonna look at people's resume. And if your resume is not up to par, if I got somebody with three amateur fights and I got this guy with 50 amateur fights and a few championships in between, who you think I'm gonna go for? Obviously, I'm gonna go for the guy with the most experience. And, and that goes a long way because all the top guys right now from Lemacheco, Mayweather, or any other, any guy, you know, Crawford and Spence and Narrow Spence, uh, um, this guy, uh, uh, Charles, they all had amateur experience. Yeah. And it helps financially and it helps for your career build you up. Because a manager will take you and they'll start building you up. It's easy to build you up because you already have a little name on, on, on the amateurs and they'll build around that and they'll get you some easy fights and, and get your confidence up in the pros and they'll see what you lacking and, and, and what you mastering and, and they'll bring other people into your team and before you know, you're becoming a complete fighter and I think people wanna go pro after one or two amateur fights or even seven or eight amateur fights not knowing how difficult it is to turn pro. Yep. This ain't gonna be easy fights. Nobody's gonna give you you're gonna an be easy, easy fight. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be the easy fight for your opponent. <laughs> you. <laughs> so you're in the right path. Right path yeah. yeah. You're in the right path. For sure. Um, we just gonna keep grinding it out day by day. Um, I got the right team around me, so yeah, I, feel, I feel good. Tell me about when you're uh, when you're home, when you're when 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 you're done boxing, right? You had a fight, you finished the fight. What do you do for a week to relax? What is your vices? I don't do much to relax. Um, nowadays, I'm, I'm just busy off my ass, honestly. Um, with the gym, um, work, family, you know, dealing with other issues, I'm always moving around. I watch TV and relax my body, let it you know, heal up. I don't really have time to myself most of, most of the days. Guys, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Like if you like it. If you don't like, press don't like. This is gonna help us get some recliners because my behind is on fire with this. <laughs> you gotta get us out these chairs, guys. This wooden chair, I, I know how people in the bar feel. After a while, they go into a, a I was, bar fight. <laughs> I was wondering what's This thing really is getting me very antsy. You gotta keep moving your legs, man, because nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. That's mm -hmm. rough. Let's get into this. So, we also have another fight. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for David? Oh, yes. I have a lot of questions for David that we're going to get into later. Okay. But I want, okay. I want David to relax <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And you just you, you put a lot on him just now. So, I'm going I'm to I'm get off Dave for a little bit. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna uh, I like that. All right, sure. All right. So, Tank Davis. Eastside Cruz. We were saying this guy's name wrong last week. Yeah. Isaac. But I see, I see Isaac, and, I, and I'm spelling it Isaac. It's fucking Isaac, man. It's Isaac. I don't know who's calling him Isaac. <laughs> yeah. We call him Isaac. Yeah. Isaac Cruz. Well, last week, last week I butchered Gambosas. I call him Gambosi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. starting from the mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. salami, baloney. <laughs> like, 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 what's the dude that was fighting? Uh, oh, yeah, we don't even know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Let's not pronounce that. I'm still doing the research. Let's <laughs> so get back into that. Um, Yes, Tank, Tank versus um, Isaac Cruz um, slash AKA Isaac Cruz. Um, what y'all think? I was not happy about that fight. Ooh. I was not okay. happy about okay. that fight. And I, I'm a, I'm a Javante Davis fan, so you okay. know there's no hating over here. But um, you know we holding these fighters at a high level, right? Um, mm -hmm. They gain the big paydays. You know 
everybody wants to see them be great. They talk about being great. Um, so we gotta hold them to, you know, high standards. And that fight, he he fought, um, fought a good opponent, of course, yes. But he didn't show me much, honestly. He didn't really hurt. He didn't hurt the guy. Um, he wasn't landing as much punches, uh, punches as he should have. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's the percentage, but um, I saw the highlights and it was it was a boring fight. Um, the boxing wasn't even. They say he boxed good, but to me, when he was boxing, he wasn't really handing as much. Um, he was doing more running than anything. Um, oh, man. And he was getting caught with these good shots as well. Yeah, he was getting caught with um, a lot of body shots. Yeah, and he, he got caught to the face a couple of good times. So who do you think won? Won that fight? Um, I give it a tank. Um, I, I still give it a tank. Um, but the uh, scorecards could have gave him more to, you know, Isaac Cruz. Yeah. Um, so, it's an interesting take. Yeah. Thing, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't expect you to go go there with that. Um, mm -hmm. I so I agree. Yes, yeah. he didn't look his best, and apparently his hand was hurt during training camp. Uh, Calvin Ford, one of his coaches, he said after the fight. Because um, I know during the fight he did say his hand was hurt. And he stopped using the left after like the eighth or ninth round. He was only using his right hand. But everybody got these problems. Everybody got problems. I, I'm just but sick and I will, tired. I will say this, and we not we don't make excuses for no fighters. He did stop using the left hand. I did notice that. That yeah. was that was that's that's clear. Like we're not gonna. I just don't want to hear anybody say, "Hey, my hand got hurt no, in training camp." Wait, wait, wait. He didn't. He didn't make the excuse. I saw him land the, a punch a few times. Yes. The uppercut, his devastating uppercut, land on the top of the guy's uh, on, uh, the, on yeah. the head. Sure the guy. So you. you yeah. Did. Someone possibly hurt himself yeah. there, not yeah. in training camp. But to his credit, he didn't make the excuse of his hand. He still fought, even when his yeah. hand was hurt, visibly, we've seen it. He was out there fighting, he was using his right hand, and he was moving. But, um, to give my take on the fight, um, I thought in the beginning of the fight he did box well. Now, I thought he would have knocked this guy out. I thought he should have knocked him out. He should have pressed the attack way sooner than he started to. Um, then once his hand got hurt, it was... Honestly, he, he looked like he wasn't even hurting the guy. Um, well, he wasn't even landing. Maybe man. like, like once, once every good shot, maybe like he'll... Yeah, yeah. But he well, wasn't well, hurting well, the guy. It was crazy. You you watched the round and you yeah. seen him throw these hard shots. And yeah, the when they showed the slow mo, he's missing them. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he couldn't really get his timing on the guy. Um, he he wasn't really landing too much too many shots on the dude. I think the first round was the feel out round. Yeah, like mm -hmm. he felt, you know, cruise out. They both felt each other out. And I think the one that won on that exchange was Cruz. I think Cruz said to himself. I don't think he could hurt me. I think I could block his best punch because I'm shorter. You know, his hands was high. So, I like that. He had a nice, tight good, defense. Good defensive yeah. responsibility. He, he kept those hands up the whole fight. And he was smothering Tank's punches yeah, yeah. by coming in. Yeah. And that was a smart move. He stuck to his game plan. Yeah. I would have liked to see, it would have been a lot more competitive if Cruz would have let his hands go a little bit more. Yeah. And I think, to Tank's credit, he was scared to open up and get caught with that uppercut. I don't think it's that Tank don't hit hard and didn't hurt him. I think he felt it because they asked him. He says, yeah, he does hit hard. But he's also being cautious. Remember, he, last thing you need is to open up even more and start getting caught. There was a point, there was a point in the fight, um, towards the middle of the fight, where Tank started to get more aggressive. And I seen Cruz slowing down, slowing down a bit. He was feeling the power. And... Then Tank pulled his foot off the gas, and I don't know if it was a hand, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was Cruz hitting him with those body shots. I think it's a combination of Cruz hitting him with the body shots. I saw a few times that he didn't like getting hit down, he grabbed him fast. Yeah. I think he did, was, he was affected with the body shots. I think he also hurt his hand. I thought he was a little bit winded. I think he threw his game plan off because he was, he's not used to backing up. Yeah. You know, so I think it. I think it's a little bit of everything. I think a little bit of everything played into this. Do you think? And this has been like a theme with Tank, like in a lot of his fights. And I feel like, I feel like he doesn't have much respect for a lot of fighters, right? And I see him like, even in the Santa Cruz fight, for example, right? Just walking in front of these guys, not moving his head. He's just, he's just <laughs> taking punches. Like it's like, and he even just started doing it in this fight. He's sitting in front of the guys playing like. I don't think he has respect for these fighters, and I think, I think I don't think he's pulling out his A game. I, I really don't. He's another guy that he trains very hard. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just 
he got the win, right? It doesn't matter if you win by a mile or an inch, but he got the win. He didn't look great, he looked sloppy at times, uh, but he still did enough to win. He did more, he, I, I expected more. I think everyone expected more. I think everyone yeah, expected absolutely. him to go knock this guy out. Yeah. But Mike Tyson couldn't knock everybody out. No. Mike Tyson fought in his prime, Bone Crusher Smith, two times. The guy kept coming forward, Tyson couldn't do nothing. Yeah. There's just some guys that can take your punch. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it becomes a boring fight. Yeah. You know, not many people will remember that fight unless you're a diehard boxing fan. Yeah. But that guy, that guy two times made Tyson look bad. And even on the podcast, Mike said, uh, that guy was just so difficult. It's tough. So, it's, tough. it's just some guys, you just yeah. don't want to fight. Yeah. And I just think... I don't think that was the case here, though. I don't, I don't, I, don't I, I wanted to see more um, domination from him, more pushing forward. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. but he doesn't want a rematch. He doesn't. I don't think he should give him a rematch. I don't think. I don't yeah, even no. think. I don't think the fight fight was close enough for a rematch. Like Cruz was, Cruz was missing a lot of punches. He showed Tank showed great defense in the first half of the fight. He he had the guy's number. He just wasn't aggressive as he used used to be. And I don't want to keep bringing up the hand thing, but he didn't look. And this is a this is a problem with like good fighters, right? Like, yeah. and this happened to Andre Ward, right? When he fought Kovalev the first time, people thought he lost the fight. Because he didn't look as good as he usually looked, or he didn't dominate That's true. an opponent the way he, he usually dominates them. So in their mind, it's it's bad, but it's not. He still, Javante won that fight. Like it's it's not even a debate. Like we're not, we're not gonna, I'm not going to sit here and say the fight was close because it wasn't. With a question, without a question of doubt, he won the fight. Yes. And uh, when you fight the best. The guys are training just as hard, Absolutely. or even harder. Yeah. You know, and then some guys are not blessed with the skills and talent of a uh, Gambosis or uh, Devin Haney yeah. or Ryan Garcia that are blessed with a lot of different talents, right? Some guys like Cruz and and, uh, and Jojo Diaz, these guys are grinders, yeah. and so they their thing is training hard, so they could throw a lot. They didn't throw enough, and that's. If they would have thrown more, if he would have thrown more, yeah, yeah. he probably would have hurt him more, maybe he dropped, who knows, no one knows. Or he would have got hit. Or he would have got hit. But it would have now shown the different side of the game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to see a rematch. It, it, it was a good fight. It wasn't a great fight. I gave the fight overall a C. Um, I expected more fireworks. Mm -hmm. But then again, when you fight better fighters, this is what's gonna happen. I hope people don't expect Javante Davis to knock everybody out. You know, he might not knock out Devin Haney. He might not knock out a number of guys, you know, but that's what it is. When you fight the best, you're gonna get less knockouts. Yeah. You know, Cotto wasn't getting all these knockouts. Trinidad wasn't getting knock all these knockouts. Who's knock next? You know, so, fuck. Who's next for the tank? Yeah, who's next for tank? That's, it's, what's, it's, what's, it's completely, and it's, it's a two-sided question. Well, two-sided answer. Yeah. Um, who wants to fight him? Number one. Do any of those guys want to fight him? And I, I don't think he's he's dodging anybody. But does he want to take these guys? Like, does he feel it's worth taking these guys? Because he's making money. Yeah, that's fighting whoever yeah. he wants to fight. He's he's and he's these fights on pay per view. He's a pay per view fighter now. Like, that's Floyd. That that seventy plus. Yeah, I, crazy. I, I choke up. Remember when the was like fifty dollars? Remember that? Like the, the big fights were like fifty fifty dollars yeah, yeah. max. Like yeah. seventy five dollars. I remember when fights were thirty nine dollars. Yeah, that's a fool. That's a fool. That's a fool. That was guy. back then when potato chips was a quarter. Uh, he's getting tight. <laughs> but let me tell you, government. a lot of people are gonna call out Tank because you think they, so? they, I, I think. Even though it was just an awkward fight for him, uh -huh. because of the size, I think the size did cause the problem. And like the guy is solid, um, but a lot of guys are gonna say, "Wow, he didn't get a knockout, so I could probably beat him." Hey, maybe I could jump in the mix. Maybe I could do this. That's so the, I think that's the old okey doke. That's the okey doke right there, man. Yeah. That's like that's like when Floyd uh, Floyd made down, and they were like, "Oh yeah, he's he's vulnerable," and then <laughs> get the tank. Nah. But you know what? Everybody's gonna have a chance to fight each other if Absolutely. they if they stick into the division. Absolutely. This this is a beautiful division. I think it's probably the most it's gonna be the most watched division 
I mean, oh, yeah. in the heavyweight, yeah. you only could talk about five guys. Yeah, yeah. This division is ten guys. And and then it's still younger guys coming up that that are not even on the map yet. Like yeah. 130, 135, Like it's like even think about like guys like Shakur Stevenson, who they had little weights. Uh, uh, Chris Colbert, all these guys, they're gonna potentially go up to 30, 35. Like these, well, they had thirty already, but they're gonna go up to thirty five at, at, at some point. Like there's a lot of guys out there. So. There's a lot of guys. The division. Uh, you just spin the wheel, pick a, pick an opponent, and you can fight them. I mean, it's very good. Yeah, Let, and, and let's give let's give some recognition to uh, Mr. Isaac Cruz. Um, I'm gonna yeah. say his name, Isaac Isaac Cruz. Let's put some respect on his name. Um, what a minute, is it Isaac or Isaac? It's, 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 it's Isaac. <laughs> I said we was gonna call him Isaac, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show him some respect. It's it's Isaac Isaac. So, the, so it's Isaac for us, but they pronounce it different over there. Well, during the fight, everyone was pronouncing it Isaac. So that's how it's pronounced over Isaac. there. I don't know. I don't. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him what his mom called. The name of Isaac. I'm gonna call him Isaac. Isaac. Right? I apologize. Let's call him Isaac. Isaac. But um, Isaac. yes, um, great defensive responsibility. Like those hands were up, and that that was a big thing. A lot of tanks punches were going off his gloves. Cause he kept those hands up the whole fight, no matter what. Even after he threw, it was hard for taking the counter because he was bringing his hands back or he left that other hand up. He was holding the phone the whole night. Um, great body shots all night. He he stuck to his game plan, um, but like you said, like a lot of these guys are not um, gifted with that talent, right? He's a grinder. So it's but so much you can do when a guy that athletic is moving around like that. He has that speed. The timing, like it's it's but so much you can do, but um, he impressed me. I thought I told you we talked about it last week. I, I thought he would get knocked out before the sixth round. Well, uh, I, I thought Tank was gonna win by knockout yeah. late, late. Yes, you said after. Uh, round, right? But you know, Cruz had some power behind that chin. Yeah, yeah, he, he impressed me. He impressed me. I, I, I want to see. I want to see him going forward now. Um, I want to see what he does. I want to see Cruz versus JoJo. Oh. That's, that. that is an exciting fight. Both of them are doing basically the fight. same thing in the fight. So imagine both of them going at it. Both Mexican and both, I think, will complement each other's style. That's a, that's a, that's, a, yeah. that's an exciting. Fight. Could be a fight of the year. It could be. They, they're gonna. That's a, that's a brawl. That's a brawl. That is a brawl. I mean, this guy Pitbull. He you can't even get a smirk out of this guy. He was as cold as can be. Yeah. They asked him questions, he said fast answers, and he just kept staring at nowhere. I mean, this guy, yeah, yeah. He's, he looks scary. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he gave my respect. He gave my respect. Um, he's trying to get that number one spot. Yeah, yeah. So, TV. so, so Tank. Tank said about Cruz, even though Cruz lost, there's a star in the making. Yeah, yeah, well. And that's a great compliment. Yeah, that's, that's a great compliment. Yeah. Plus he broke the streak of Tank. Of the knockout streak. Yeah. 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 No. 16, so, Ray was on 16. 17. I think it was 17 straight. 17 yeah, yeah. Straight. I was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't stop this guy, so. And then the little guy, too. Like, he was 5'4". 5'4", my height. Yeah. Yep. You're not a little guy, though. I'm twice his weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I... <laughs> today. 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 <laughs> Tomorrow will be three times. <laughs> <laughs> so... But, yeah, I like that. There was uh, respect. Yes. Uh, yes. And I like how he praised them. That was a, a, a wonderful way to uh, to talk about his opponent. Um, For him to see that, that's because he, he felt so strong. Yeah, yeah, no, the guy was, was tough. He's a tough competitor. Even Floyd said, you know, everybody was upset about the fight that Tank didn't knock him out. Some people thought he lost. You know, so if he didn't knock him out, it's an automatic loss. That's not the case. Yeah. You know, I actually like to see this. Uh, I know for a lot of people, they probably thought it was boring, but it actually it, it actually shows <laughs> it shows me what Tank could do with adversity mm -hmm. and in certain instances. Like he showed that he has, a, I mean, he has to clean it up. He has to clean it up, but it shows that he could box. He could move. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. he's just not used to doing it enough, and he's too comfortable knocking people out. But I think it just showed a different side mm -hmm. of him that he could. Become better at. Didn't he do that with Barrios? I think he boxed the best with Barrios. That's boxing with what he did there. I 
Well, Barrios is a bigger guy. He yeah. started and, and, and like, he started Barrios, losing. He had to figure him out. Barrios brought him the best out of him, honestly. You think so? Yeah, I feel like back wasn't Barrios winning on the scorecards. He was. He was winning on the scorecards. Yes. Yeah, and then um, it was it was it was the best out of two. When uh, Terrence Crawford fought uh, the other better beater, remember that one? Yeah. The tall guys, it, it, you got to figure them out. See, it's kind of yeah. hard to get in. Like they're looking for, to counter you, and they got the reach on you. And these these guys are like you said, like these are top guys. Yeah, Barrios came out with his. Well, team. they're showing bl blueprints for everybody. Yeah. All these guys have weaknesses. Yes. It's who sticks to the game plan, and whoever sticks to the game plan and does a phenomenal training camp. Wins the goal. It's a twelve round fight. You gotta make adjustments. It's, it's chess. It's, it's a twelve round fight, but you gotta fight for fifteen. Yes. Strategy is the best thing. Yeah. When you yeah. have the best strategy, I mean, it's hard to beat. It's really hard to beat. I like to give a shout out to what Floyd, Al Heyman, and Leonard Ellaby uh, did. And uh, even though I was watching the whole show, the YouTube thing mm -hmm. with some of the guys on there, uh, I just couldn't help watching. Uh, hope, uh, well, not, not hoping, but wondering if a fly is going to land in Leonard Ellaby's nose. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, this guy has two... Yo, <laughs> what's it, didn't somebody say... Um, two huge nostrils. He resembled... Looked like the Lincoln we, Tunnel and the, the gonna, Holland Tunnel. Listen, we're not going to do this on this did episode. Didn't someone <laughs> say he resembled um, Potato Man or something like he that? He does look like Mr. Potato he, Head. He looks like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Oh, man. Shout out to... Him. I thought you was about to say something nice about the dude. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Bing bong! <laughs> shout out to... Shout out to Leonard Ellaby, man. Um, but much respect. I yes. like, you know what they did, right? No, would you, what they, exactly are you talking about? Well, Floyd, Al Heyman, and uh, Leonard Ellaby, they, they put boxing on Sundays. Yes, 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 yes. And they, Floyd, they Floyd elaborated about it. He said, hey, there's football on Sunday. There's baseball on Sunday. There's basketball on Sunday. Tennis on Sunday. Uh, the music videos on Sunday. Why, Why is there no boxing on Sunday? And, and and you're right. It's almost like a sacred day, which it is for a lot of people. But everyone's home. Everyone's home. That's so it, it makes sense to it on a Sunday because everybody is going out on Saturday party. So when they're home Sunday, getting ready for the next day for work, they could put it in. They 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 rent or stream. Floyd, and, Floyd, Floyd is such a, a competitor. He was smirking at when he made those comments also because. It's just like, you know, he's competing with he's the... He's competing with other sports. Yeah, he says not... He said no, but he, he is. is. But in his head, he, you he, know... He's such a competitor. Yeah. Now, my only... But really, honestly, he's not competing against other sports because yeah. you just can't. You can't. But he's definitely competing with other boxing networks. He's, he's okay. challenging. He's he's yeah. pushing the limits, as he as he always does. He's just pushing, pushing the limits, yeah. which is dope. My only complaint with the Sunday... If you're gonna do Sunday fights, please have them on the East Coast because I cannot stay up till four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. When I got work on Monday the next day, like I can't do it. Like these fights, like, you can't have them on the West Coast. This time difference is killing us. The main event starting at 11, 12 o'clock. Sunday fights are great. I love the Sunday fights. Everyone's home. I'm chilling. Love it. Please have it on the East Coast. It was a little too late. Uh, what was it? 11 o'clock at night yeah, the for us. Started, like 11. Yeah. yeah. Eight o'clock over there. Maybe if they start five o'clock over tired. there, if they start at five o'clock over there, it will be eight o'clock over here. Right. That'll be, that'll be good. That'll be good. For them? <laughs> I'll live there. I don't care. I, I would love to see how much money they make, the views. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some big Mexican fan, I, I fan know, base. I know they were from, uh, there were some comments made by them after the fight about people illegally streaming the fight. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of uh, illegal streams of the fight. Um, Floyd, Floyd says something about it. Tank says something about it. Um, but that's that's killing the boxing game right now. But again, like it is what it is, right? If <laughs> if they didn't charge almost eighty dollars, I'm right. sure they would have paid fifty dollars. I, I don't even look at it no more. Nah, people still go. People still go. I'll, I'll wait. They and, still go. You know, that should be ten dollars, man. <laughs> I ain't paying ten dollars. <laughs> It, it's it's steep. And, and let me tell you, you know, what I want to see is like back in the days in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, even early 80s, uh, Don King had a great undercard where not, you're not buying just for the main event, you're buying for the whole undercard. Mm -hmm. And people were sitting there filling up the stadiums. 
because the whole undercard was good. You had Chavez in there, you had Christy Martin in there, you, he even broke Butterbean in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he had uh, Terry Norris in there, uh, Michael Cobble, and then Mike Tyson. I mean, he had a heck of a lineup, and uh, and the promotion was great. If, if some of these guys, these promoters could put better on the cards, just not guys that are gonna get KO'd in two rounds, I don't wanna see that. I really don't wanna see that. I wanna see good fights the, on pay-per-view. The undercard that we just watched, uh, the the Tank undercard was pretty good. Uh, Derby and Chanko fought, um, he, he fought Triple G. Who won? Uh, so, <laughs> I thought he got robbed. He, Wait, he, Triple G just fought? No, no, Triple G didn't fight. Derby and Chanko fought. Okay. He, he fought Triple G, he fought Danny Jacobs. He, yeah, yeah, I know that. They have the same training, yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but he fought on the undercard of the Tank fight, and it was a real good fight. He fought this guy, uh, Cuban guy, I can't remember his name right now, but excellent fight. It was a, it was a very good undercard fight. Um, I, I thought he won the fight, though. Um, yeah, and it's, it's sad, and I want to touch on this, too, because... When he fought Triple G, I thought he beat Triple G too. I, I scored him winning that, that fight. fight. And the guy's 36 years old now. He's turning 37. And he's, it's like you're about he's to, a, you're getting pushed out of boxing. He's, he's, a, like, he's a gatekeeper. Like yeah, it's, it, it's, it's like, it's almost like they're, they're pushing people out of out of boxing. And we know like boxing is, is politics. Like, yeah, um, for sure. And that, the fight on Sunday could have went either way, right? But, um, the scorecards were crazy, man. They, they had him like winning like three rounds out of the ten. Like <laughs> it was a competitive fight. Like, and, and that's the thing that Floyd was talking about. That he he spoke with the WBC. They got to do something about these judging, man. It's, it's ridiculous. The judging, it's the ridiculous. judging is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's bad. Like even uh even the fight after that, which uh what's this guy for this Fortuna guy? Did you watch the the fight before Tank? Fortuna, yeah. yeah this guy's like six six. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, uh, 154. Um, but that fight was not as competitive as the fight before, but it, it wasn't as Towering. widespread. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he didn't look good either. But I remember we, the first time watching him, I was amazed because yeah. he was moving quick, he was letting his hands go, and he was just he just couldn't miss. He doesn't, he doesn't use his length, though. Yeah, he's 6'6 six six in, the, in the 154 pound division, and you. you oh, and this fight, he was. In this you know what? That's, that's how he fights. That's how he fights. But uh, to my point, right? Like, there needs to be some type of penalty to judges. Like, it, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Like, even we can go back to like the Floyd Canelo fight. Like, somebody scored the fight a draw. Like, the uh, actual professional judge. But that was like, that was an in that was draw. A, that was an incompetence. Like, it wasn't like they were eighty years old. I think that was right. they don't like Floyd. But why is they that got even paid. allowed? Why is that kind of stuff even allowed in boxing? Like, there's no penalty for that. Like, is this is crazy? Like, these guys, these guys train. Like, you, you fight it. Like, yeah, you, I don't. You, I, I feel you bad. You feel this. Yeah. I know you feel what I'm saying yeah, right now. Yeah. Like, these guys work hard. Like, you put your life on the line. First of all, everything should be fair for you. Everything. You everything. put your life on the line, and you get in the ring. You fight your heart out, and you get cheated. And that's the thing. This, the guy you talked about is, is a white guy. Yes. And. Uh, whether it's white, black, or Spanish, all these guys really are not guys with great educations. This is the sport for the guys with no education. Poor man's sport. Poor man's sport. Very few have an education besides the Klitschko's. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, you either got a criminal record or, <laughs> you know, a you're a gang member or, you know, you're definitely not in the choir, you know? Like, these are the people that's in the sport. Nah, that's true. And that's they're true. tough. Yeah, and they're yeah. tough, rugged guys. One guy that I do not want to see in the future as a judge is Teofimo Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> With his 10-2 oh, scorecard. Score yeah, that was, that was um, I think... Why well, his hair looked key. like the Milky Way. <laughs> he, was, he was a little concussed. That 10-2 scorecard was a little crazy. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yes, it, it is a problem in boxing. Politics of boxing is just at, at this point it's out of control, man. It's out of control. And I think of all the sports, like a sport where you put your life on the line, like that's the last thing you want to do is get cheated, cheated out of something, man. I'm a huge Manny Pacquiao fan. I love Timothy Bradley, he's my buddy. If I see him soon, I wish him well. But the first fight with Timothy Bradley and Pacquiao, Pacquiao gave him robbery. 
Yo, a I beat him one through one through twelve. Yeah. I think he probably won one round, and they gave Pacquiao one round. I mean, Who's if right? I was Pacquiao, I would walk out the ring. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you ever seen above the rim? I was shot. You ever seen above the rim? Above the ring, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Everybody, <laughs> everybody out there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, and the next two fights were similar. Except the last fight, Pacquiao dropped him twice. Yeah, he had to. He was like, I'm going to Y'all robbing me. Robbing it, it, me. It was, it's crazy. That was one of the worst. I mean, that was... I, I, I never saw Bradley even land much. I that, mean, was just, that was something above, though. That was probably like a person higher yeah. than... Yeah, he pissed somebody off. Yeah, Bob Arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Bob yeah. Arrow. His own promoter. <laughs> so, so real fast, because I want to add this in here. Uh, when De La Hoya had his last fight with Bob Arrow, it was against Sugar Shane Mosley, the second fight. And I believe that uh, Mosley was losing every round until maybe 9, 10, 11, 12, probably four rounds. The last four rounds, he was putting it together, right? Yeah. And yeah, even I then, I thought he lost. And I mean, it was so bad, the decision. And that was because. The La Jolla had Golden Boy promotion established. This was his last fight on the contract. And Bob Arum, I'm sure, and I'm gonna elaborate more on this, spoke to a lot of people that were judges. Mm -hmm. Hey, you wanna work this fight with Oscar De La Jolla and Mosley? Uh, yeah, yeah, Bob. Because I think this is a tough fight and De La Jolla might lose. I think, do you want to work this? So he's not telling you to yeah, throw yeah. the fight from, but in order to work for some of these guys, they kind of hinting for it, right? Mm -hmm. And they get these jobs, and hey, if you do a good job for me, Michael, or Jimmy, or whoever's in that in that, in that uh, corner, I'll put you in the next fight, that other big fight coming up, remember? And they'll do exactly what they said, and they screw over these guys. I mean, Oscar didn't deserve that loss. He, he that was a bad he loss. Mosley didn't even think he won. And Mosley didn't, didn't think he won. <laughs> Mosley didn't think he won. Bernard Hopkins was in the back with his mouth open. Like he didn't. Yeah. But, and, then, and then there's another one with Bob Arrow. Okay? So, Jeremy Horn, right? Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn. I'm going to disagree with you. On Manny Pacquiao. Go ahead. Okay? I mean, that round 10 was like a 10-3 a round. I mean, he busted him up with he did. every shot. He did, but Jeff Horn, Jeff Horn won that fight. Go ahead. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. And that was his last fight also. Yes. With top rank mm -hmm. and in Australia. Yep. And he made sure that Pacquiao would lose that fight. Yeah. And I, you know what? It was a competitive fight. Think, it was a good fight. Though. I think that started with the Timothy Bradley stuff. Yeah. I think the Bob Barrow Pacquiao thing started that first Timothy Bradley fight. No matter what, you was gonna lose that fight, Pacquiao. Pacquiao. You was gonna lose. Pacquiao. And it was making it was yes. it was looking for him to lose constantly. Yes, yes. And then they, they tried to lift Timothy Bradley up after that. Yes. He was the next guy up and Pacquiao had punch him twice. And you know what? Let's keep this conspiracy theory going right now. Because now you got my juices from so And and Terrence know. Crawford, I'm sure, knows the whole scheme. And that's why he and knocked he was, out everybody at Welterweight. Yes, yes. Think about this. Mm -hmm. Since Terrence Crawford went to Welterweight. Every fight is ended in stoppage. He did not let any fight go to decision because Bob Allen was oh. probably. And let me tell you something. Hypothetical. If this fight would have won. Box analogy conspiracy theories. If, you, if <laughs> Crawford would have won the decision with Porter. Yeah, he would have got robbed. Who would have known? He got who robbed. knows what would have happened? I would have got paid. And, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he would have got robbed because I can tell by the, how the commentator was going. Oh, yeah, they, they were leaning towards Porter, Porter, yeah. Porter. Yeah. You know. They weren't giving Crawford crap for anything. Fight. Even though it was a close fight, Crawford was successful with some things, and they were making it seem like Sean Porter was running away. With and him. I wouldn't be surprised if I would have saw, in Terrence Crawford's corner, Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao whispering in his ear, "They're gonna take the fight away from you like they did to us. So you better go out there and knock this guy out." Mm -hmm. And he did. He did. He did. That was impressive stoppage. I mean, for him to wake up like that and. Them telling him, you know, you're yeah. losing, and him to come out and be like, okay. But that's the job of the corner. The job of the corner is saying, hey, man, yeah. you're doing whatever you're doing, but right now you got to do what we need you to do. Because yeah. yeah. he was almost in limbo. There was a few rounds. There was, a, I, I'm not lying about this, man. I don't know what round. He was boxing, 
And he's looking up. I don't know what he's looking up for. He's a slow start. I'm surprised he get caught with right hand. time he has to get hit in order for him to wake to up, up and, and yeah. turn up. He, lose, he loses Which focus. Is yeah. A lot of these guys lose focus. Yeah. I don't understand why. This is a major fight. I, I think it's, <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's and as weird as it may sound, I think it's a cockiness. I think a lot of these guys yeah. have such a cockiness about them. Like, yo, you, ain't, you can't beat me. Like, it's whatever. I'm going to come in here and do whatever. And then once they feel like you put some type of pressure on them or you feel like they're losing the fight, it's like, oh, all right, let me turn on them. But they get to a point where they meet somebody that, hey, is just as good as you and right. as even. Right. And then, then you got to fight. And I want to touch on something you just said, right, about corners. And I'm going to ask you, Dave, because yeah. you're a fighter. So mm -hmm. how important, like, and this is like your understatement, like, but you, this, this you can, is, I like this. Go. You can just tell, like, this is very, obviously this is important, but the, your, your, your corner, your corner man, like. Your corner, your corner man has to be your second set of eyes, yeah. Your corner man has to, to be there to, to tell you, you know, openings and um, flaws of the other fighter or what you're doing wrong. Um, your, your corner man is, is, your, is your right hand man when you're in there. And if your corner man is not talking to you and, you know, telling you these things, um, you need to get a new corner man. You need two corner men. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. one corner man has to look at the opponent, see what flaws and what things are open. The other one has to see what you're doing wrong. Yes. Yeah. And everybody has to collaborate. Yes, yes. Because uh, one guy can't see all that. Can't see all that. Don't. The, Plus, <laughs> you need a good cut man. Yeah. Don't. Very important. Don't tell me, um, just go beat him up. Go oh, beat him up. Yeah, oh, knock him out. Listen. The I reason, can't do nothing with that, guys. The reason I asked you that question is just watching yeah. the fights over the weekend and just the horrible. Trainers that yeah. like there was this one one guy. He's he, you got a box. <laughs> he, this is literally he says it's two rounds straight. You got a box. <laughs> what what do you think we doing? What are we doing here? Yeah, like, that that happened to me in one of these fights in 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 the um, Golden Gloves um with, with Fernando and I'm telling him that the guy's doing something that I'm just not catching on to, and you know it's just happening so fast paced. But I'm telling him I'm like yo, I can't get through this you know uh -huh. his jab or something like that and. And Fernando's just like, he's just in the moment. He's not saying nothing to me. And I'm like, all right, I just get pissed off. And I'm like, all right. And we just go through the emotions. Sometimes you yep. get a second guy. But you need, yeah, you need yeah, a second guy. Yeah. But in the amateurs, you only got one. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes the other one is the bucket guy. Yeah. But it's very important that the fighter and the trainer communicate yeah. prior to the big fight, Absolutely. right? And the fighter has to tell the, 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 the coach, hey, I'm gonna come to the corner, and if I'm struggling, I'm gonna tell you, hey, I'm struggling, I need, I need some answers, because this is my fight, and if I lose, I'm in the bottom of the <laughs> stack. And I don't wanna be in the bottom of the stack, because I trained hard for this. Yeah. So you need to get woken up. I, I've seen a lot of things in the corners, you know? Mm -hmm. But the very, very, very best, Emmanuel Stewart, uh, Angelo Dundee, Freddie Roach, these guys are there constantly repeating. And, and you know what, I, I've noticed from Freddie Roach, not with Pacquiao, but with other guys, uh, constantly repeating it. You know, like when he had Mike Tyson for a short time, Freddie mm -hmm. Roach, he said, I want you to go under and over. Mike, I want you to go under and over. And he'll repeat it again, keep looking at his eyes. Mike. I'm going to go under and over. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes the fighter is so focused on yes. one angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to break them out of that 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 zone. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. hypnotize. I get, I like, get like that too. I get yeah. like that too. I'm, I sometimes I can't. Even, I don't even remember what he says yeah. or anything like that because I'm just you know. You we, might still be in a lot. We high in here. We yeah. we in yeah, war. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Nicely, so. It, it's a tough, tough job. Not yeah. only for a fighter, but for a trainer. Yeah. A trainer has to prepare. A trainer has to do a lot of things. A lot of people don't. Like, we're gonna go to an episode, and we'll have some trainers here. Yeah. I mean, David is also a trainer. Yeah. You know, he's also a trainer in his gym. Um, but yeah, it's a very difficult job. Very stressful. Uh, sometimes I want to throw the bucket at some of the people. <laughs> uh, you know, but I love the sport. I love the people. And this is what we signed up for. And we're in this the same way the fighters are in this. And we all got to roll together, you know? Yeah, listen, man. Before we wrap up today, I want to... Um, because, you know, here at the Boston Olympic Podcast, we, 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 give out, we give out flowers. So we want to give David flowers today. So 
um, just watching you come up, like, and I remember when you first came to the gym. I, I remember, like, the first, <laughs> yeah. the first day you came here. Like, we, I think we spawned that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from that day till now, like, like you put in, you put in the work. Like, you're one of the the guys that you impress me every every time I see Thank you fight. You, bro. I appreciate nah, that. Nah, bro, you you impress me. Um, you've elevated your game, and I'm excited for what's to come in the future for you. Um, you. But stay stay with it. Like, I, I have no doubt. Sorry. The biggest, the biggest thing I've seen from Dave, right, is his poise. I've seen sometimes his aggression don't work, and sometimes his punches are not going through. Mm -hmm. But he's still relaxed and he's jabbing and he's looking for the right moment to strike, almost like a cobra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, he makes adjustments. Yes. And does. you can see it. He's thinking it, man. You gotta make adjustments in boxing. You can't fight the same fight over and over and over and over again. You have to make adjustments. Yeah, that's one thing that I explain to you know the fighters I train um, and to the to even you know my sparring partners and stuff like that. Um, you can't just be one sided. You know, you got to be able to do everything. You, mm -hmm. you got to be able to you know in the pocket, outside the pocket, um, counter, um, you know, work that jab a lot, um, work the body. You got to be able to do it all in it. Um, and it's just gonna elevate your game because every time somebody does something, you, you're, able, you're able to dish something else back to the, you know, to counter. Um, and that's basically the name of the game to counter um, whatever he, he's gonna put out there. Um, you know, that's how that's how I approach it, honestly. Um, to to counter whatever he, he comes at me with. Chess game. It's a chess yeah. game. It's a chess um, game. And if I can do that, you know, I'm gonna be able to beat you. Um, I believe David worked the corner of Isaiah. He did. He did. Right. He got his first victory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, how did that feel? Um, I felt great. I felt great. Um, you know, when you when they in there is like you're in there. Um, and you're just talking to them. Um, you know, trying to keep their head in the game and just screaming at them so they can hear your voice and know that they're not alone in there when it's their first time. Honestly, um, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, you know, he gets sloppy in there. He didn't punch the um, first time. But um, it was it was great. It was a great experience. His condition got him out of jams. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. His, yeah. his condition was great. Honestly, I was I was actually um surprised how good he did um and how energized he was between those rounds. Like he took you know, the right amateurs in the first yeah, yeah. first fight. One day. Um, amateurs in the first fight get tired like this. <laughs> We're talking about Maxwell Morrell, uh ladies and gentlemen, yeah. from Boxingology. And David worked his corner. I trained him through the whole training camp. Yes, did. But David worked the corner and did an excellent job. Uh, also worked Kendrick's corner. Yep. Yeah. And he's 2-0 oh yeah. on uh, Chahai Tucker's team stablemate. Yeah. One, he fought him. Yeah. And one, coaching against him. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, Kendrick, Ken Kendrick um, did great. Um, the only thing with Kendrick was um, I had to wake him up. You could just tell he's very nonchalant. Yeah, um, yeah. So when he was back there, I'm telling him he has to wake up, um, bring more energy. Um, this is not a game. Like, you, you're about to go to war right now to wake up. So it was just telling him, motivating him, telling him, you know, your family, you know, is dependent Phenomenal on Phenomenal skills, so, yeah. but has brain freezes like Crawford too. Yeah, right. so um, it was just, you know, keeping him motivated throughout the whole fight to where he, he knows he could do it. And I've seen that. Um, yeah. After the first round, you, yeah. you kind of screamed on him a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, seen him. Right. I, I, I was screaming over there, and, and that second round, he came out. Yeah, like, he started booming. Right? He was a whole different fight in the second mm -hmm. round. So. so, to wrap it up, we always have one fight coming up, and we give our picks. The next fight coming up is Richard Comey from New York against Vasily Lemacheco. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave, we'll start with Dave. What do you think? Um, Who's your pick? Well, Lomachenko is actually my favorite fighter, so you know, it's gonna be a biased opinion. I'm gonna go with Lomachenko. Um, We're biased here, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I'm giving him a knockout. Richard Comey seems really big next to him, but I'm giving him the knockout late rounds, maybe 10, 11, around there. Richard Comey is strong, but I don't think he's um, gonna be able to move with this guy, Lomachenko. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think, I think Loma, he's, I think he's got something to prove. This fight, I think, I think he's he's motivated. I think he's gonna stop this guy. I think he's gonna be an impressive win for Loma. Um, it's gonna put him back into that that 135. Not not that he's out of the conversation, but people are forgetting about him. Um, I think he's gonna show out this fight and 
least average, I see. I'm going to say this is going the distance. And I think Loma is going to win. Unanimous decision. Uh, I think Comey is training totally different now, uh, from my understanding, because of that Teofimo setback. Yes, yes. And, you know, he has a lot to prove, a lot more than Lomachenko. And uh, he's going to do a lot of things different, a lot of new things he's working on. Uh, but I still think Lomachenko is going out there. He's going to dominate, he's going to work his angles, he's going to let his hands go. And then, after this fight is over, it gets more interesting in the division. Because now these guys are kind of eliminating each other. And we have to face each other, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. we got to face each other. Yeah. So, it's the, it's, the dirty, it's the dirty 12, that's what it is. Because <laughs> there's 10 guys in there. Tank just went down, he's number 11. And, number, and rank number 11 is Luke Campbell. So, yeah, 12 very, very good fighters. Think about that. Luke Campbell is number 11. Yeah. Well, number 12 because number Tank, 12. Tank just brings him down. Right. So he's number 12 on the list. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> be, be, a be, and then Josue is in there. I mean, the division is full. The next, the next two to three years in that division is going to be amazing. amazing. Fire, fireworks. A lot of money. Fireworks as well. I was going to say, um, Richard Comey, when, when was his last fight? Was it? No, it wasn't Tio, right? Uh, I think he fought again after Tio. Right? Yeah, he well, Richard Comey, yeah. we're gonna look it up real fast right now. We don't, have our, we don't have our researcher, uh, Angel, Angel here today. Oh, Angel is not right here right now. Uh, let's look him up right now. Keep talking, guys. Yeah, I, th I think he got a, a, a knockout um, in his last fight, um, which is expected from this guy. He's the knockout artist. Yeah, Comey, Comey's good. Um, and we'll, we'll see what Loma has left in the tank. Like, Loma's getting involved. Yeah, he is. You can um, tell. So this is this is a this is a make or break fight for him, honestly. Richard Comey is thirty wins, three losses, one by knockout, obviously the Teofimo, mm -hmm. and twenty seven knockouts. Wow, pretty impressive. He has five stars. He's ranked number one in his country of Ghana, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and ranked number seven in the world, which is major. Uh, the man is 34 years old, so time is clicking in that division. Um, his residence is from the Bronx. And his last fight, you're right, he did have a fight against Jackson Martinez, yes. and he won by KO. Yes, yes. The oh, guy was yes, yes. 19 and 1. Yes, that's, the, that's the kid on um, full of Roley. Yep. And yep. They, they cheated him too. Yep. And, and yeah, yep. And, and that <laughs> kid, yeah, he lost to. Rolando Romero, and that's another guy. Romero's in that list too, and, and in the top, in the top twelve. He's not, but <laughs> no, um, he's not, but he's in there. He does he's not, but <laughs> that's another thing, right? He beat Roley. Yeah, he and, beat Roley, and, and he got robbed. And then now the next fight, he has to fight Comey. He gets knocked out. Isn't that crazy, Boxing right? Boxing politics. Bo Boxing. He, he mean he fought Teofimo and got knocked out. No, no, no. Jackson Martinez. Jackson Martinez. Oh, Jackson Martinez. Yes, Jackson that's, Martinez. that's right. what you're talking about. Yeah, so, the fight that he he fought, he won that fight. Probably would have never seen the same Richard Comey after yeah. he Roley. But now he's fast to fight Richard Comey, and you get KO because they KO. Him. And and that just shows you because uh, one thing about Roley, he's a heavy hitter. He's not a very great technical guy. Not a great boxer. Everyone talks about he has great power. That's all. That's about it, right? We haven't seen much about him, and even Tank. Mentioned, all he has is power. He doesn't have anything else. So uh, to beat a guy like that was good. I mean, uh, you know, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think it's gonna be a very good fight. Uh, Lomachenko should beat this guy. Uh, and it's a good victory. And then what's next? What's next on the list? I mean, Lomachenko is getting up in age too, so. Yeah. You know, he probably has another two solid years, maybe three. I mean, he just takes care of himself very well. Uh, and uh, so, I, I mean. He hasn't taken much punishment. So doesn't take much punishment. No, no telling how long. I wouldn't be surprised if he's there to 37 years. Uh, he wants his belts back. Yeah. He wants his belts back. Yeah, he wants his belts back. I mean. He's coming. He's coming. I mean, there's going to be good fights. There's a lot of good fights. I think we all agree. You can mix and match, and he, even with the losers, mix and match. And I'm happy with any fight that's made in that, that 12. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Yeah, any fight is made. And I'll be even happier when we get better seats. I mean, this thing has broken my yeah. behind. Like, <laughs> I can tell by his position. Like, I've been shaking. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> uh, we need to get new chairs, y'all. He's been doing so. a little angles in the chair. <laughs> new chairs. Listen, we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. So yes. like, comment, subscribe. Let's get um, it. I know y'all watching. I see y'all. Thank you very much, David, for today. Thank you for having me, for real. Yes, sir. So I want to be on this pleasure. again, for sure. Now, you'll be back. Well, it's always yes. a pleasure. And until next time, people, ciao. Bing bong. <laughs>